Solomon. The story of Solomon is one of the most sorrowful stories in the Bible, and it is also one of the more disappointing stories. One person who had virtually all the advantages any man on earth could have was Solomon. Things started off rather pleasingly for King Solomon. His father stated that he would be the king. His name means peace. He was the son of David and Bathsheba. 1 Kings 3, 5 In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. And God said, Ask me what I shall give you. God was giving Solomon a blank check, and God told him, Fill it in. What do you want? Solomon was not only a wise ruler, but also an excellent administrator. He brought his father's vision of a magnificent temple to life by building it. Solomon offered up an extraordinary prayer in dedication. What an encouraging beginning! But with all these great advantages, did Solomon finish strong? We will let the scriptures answer this one for us. Solomon engaged in all of the Lord's activities specified in Deuteronomy as inappropriate for rulers. Deuteronomy 17, 16-17, Amplified Bible Further, he shall not acquire many war horses for himself, nor make the people return to Egypt in order to acquire horses to expand his military power, since the Lord said to you, you shall never return that way again. He shall not acquire multiple wives for himself, or else his heart will turn away from God. Nor for the same reason shall he acquire great amounts of silver and gold. He amassed wealth in the form of Egyptian horses, silver, gold and wives from other countries. This was the start of his ultimate downfall and it was all because he fell right into the trap, compromising his faith in God and following the wicked ways of the pagan nations he was associating with, despite the Lord's warning. 1 Kings 9, 4-7 Amplified Bible As for you, if you walk, live your life before me, as David your father walked, in integrity of heart and in uprightness, acting in accordance with everything that I have commanded you, you will keep my statues and my precepts. Then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever, just as I promised your father David, saying, You shall not be without a man descendant on the throne of Israel. But if you or your sons turn away from following me and do not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel from the land which I have given them, and I will cast out of my sight the house which I have consecrated for my name and presence. Then Israel will become a proverb, a saying, and a byword, object of ridicule, among all the peoples. As a result, Solomon lost God's blessing. When Solomon ascended to the throne, he was perhaps as young as 20. He was given a fantastic opportunity. However, the final account of Solomon's life is one of disappointment. Solomon's polygamy was first a problem because it was contrary to God's initial plan of one man and one woman being united. Second, marrying these women from neighboring nations was prohibited, as God had warned that such women would turn the Israelites' hearts away from following their gods. Solomon, sadly, ignored these truths hundreds of times. The extent to which Solomon disobeyed this crucial command is astounding. His wives converted him to idolatry, exactly as predicted. 1 Kings 11, 4-8 Amplified Bible for when Solomon was old, his wives turned his heart away after other gods, and his heart was not completely devoted to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the fertility goddess of the Sidonians, 
and after Milikom the horror, destable idol of the Ammonites. Solomon did evil things in the sight of the Lord and did not follow the Lord fully as his father David had done. Then Solomon built a high place for worshipping Chemosh, the horror, destable idol of Moab, on the hill which is east of Jerusalem, and for Molesh the horror, detestable idol of the sons of Ammon. And he did the same for all of his foreign wives, who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. In terms of abstaining from idolatry, verse 4 indicates that King David's heart was entirely faithful to the Lord his God. But Solomon did not follow in his father's footsteps. He built idolatrous shrines on the Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem. 1 Kings 11, 9-13 Amplified Bible So the Lord became angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not follow other gods. But he did not observe, remember, obey what the Lord had commanded. Therefore the Lord said to Solomon, Because you have done this, and have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded you, I will certainly tear the kingdom away from you and give it to your servant. However, I will not do it in your lifetime for the sake of your father David, but I will tear it out of the hand of your son Rehoboam. However, I will not tear away all the kingdom. I will give one tribe, Judah, to your son for the sake of my servant David, and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. He now declared that due to Solomon's idolatry, the kingdom would be taken from him and given to one of his servants. It would not, however, take place during Solomon's lifetime, and not all twelve tribes would be taken from the house of David, and Solomon's son would receive one tribe. Solomon's beginning was superior to his conclusion. A good start does not always imply a good finish. He had been raised to the pinnacle of greatness, but he descended into moral degradation and idolatry. If only the king had put his words into action, in Ecclesiastes 12. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 to 14, Amplified Bible. When all has been heard, the end of the matter is, fear God, worship him with awe-filled reverence, knowing that he is almighty God and keep his commandments, for this applies to every person. For God will bring every act to judgment, every hidden and secret thing, whether it is good or evil. In the end, the purpose of this is not to confuse us, but rather to demonstrate that as creations fashioned in his image, although we are intended to be intellectually complicated, we are required to have a relationship with our Maker founded on trust. This may be one of the reasons why people choose to disobey God. How did the wisest man in history turn away from God? How was it possible for the leader whose talents and singular focus had previously made him the buzz of the world to stray away from his calling? The same kinds of temptations that confronted Solomon also confront every other leader today. When we arrive, it's easy to cease hunger for growth and greatness since we've accomplished our goals how fast we reach a state of contentment, and how shortly after that we start our downward spiral. The Bible never tries to deny that people who love God and are godly can sometimes fall short. And this is probably because the Father wants us to understand that being known and called by the name of God doesn't shield us from temptations. It doesn't matter how long we have become believers or have been walking by faith we must never forget that we have an adversary who constantly watches us so that he can discover a weakness and have a foothold on us.